the One Gospel Academy College for Saints, a Christian academic center for learning and thought. This is the short course on the origin of God, the 2nd to 27th October 2023. The father loves his innumerable sons, but especially his firstborn because of his righteous qualities. The father loves his innumerable sons, but especially his firstborn because of his righteous qualities. Righteous qualities, his character, his habits, his behavior, his ways. Not to talk about his position and appointments, you, you know all that by now. But the, the focus is his righteous qualities. The father loves his firstborn because of his righteous qualities. He, he, he is his exact image. He is just like me. Every proud father says, hey, so this is my son. He's just like me. He behaves like me. You know, and he's very happy, very proud of his son. So the father is very proud of his firstborn. Let nobody have any doubt. Father God is very proud. In quote, he's very happy, very pleased with his firstborn because of his righteous qualities, exactly like himself. Firstly, Christ loves and cares for all father owns, even with his life, and faithfully runs his errands. And I want us to know that word care. Care. The Lord Jesus, Christ the Lord, same, same person, he cares for all of Father God's property and all. And how does he care? With his words and with sustenance. Our Lord Jesus cares for all. It's these innumerable sons that he's bringing to the Father. He cares for every one of us with words and with sustenance. He's at it every day. And that makes Father God very happy. This is, a, this is caring. As he told the disciples, he said, Do you love me? Say, Care for my sheep. As you see me do, do the same. Follow me, he said. Do as I do. I care for the sheep. How is he caring for the sheep? With words and with sustenance. With words and with sustenance. So the Lord goes about doing just this. Eight billion of us is taking care of everyone with his words and with sustenance. This makes the Father very happy. This righteous quality makes the Father very happy. And I think there is something for all of us to learn there. All right? So, and that's the care he has for everything that Father God owns, even with his own life. Remember how he, he gave his life on the cross to redeem the innumerable sons back to the Father. That, that, is his, that is who he is, self-sacrificial. And he faithfully runs the father's errands. You know, it's, it's the joy of any parent when your son or your child or your daughter runs your errands for you. Go buy something for me and the child goes with joy, with liveliness. It's his father's joy. And that's how Christ is. He's called faithful and true, meaning because he runs his father's errands with liveliness. That makes the father very happy. Not only does the firstborn studies and knows Father God's great decision, priority and plans, but accomplishing them as the Father wants is his source of pleasure and food. As, we, as he told us in John chapter 3, verse 34, say, my food, my bread, is to do the will of the Father and to finish it. There is something for all of us to learn, eh? talking about his appointment, his reign and his support. So this, these are some of the righteous qualities that Christ the Lord has that makes the Father very pleased with him, which if we copy, we also will please the Father. For Christ, in his unyielding love for the Father, success means to put a smile on Father's face, or else the firstborn has no pleasure in it. He made that abundantly clear one day when he came and told him, say, look, your mother, your brothers and sisters are waiting for you outside. He said, no, 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 wrong. Who are my brothers and sisters? These are those who do the will of my Father. These are my mothers and my brothers and my sisters. So for Christ the King, the Lord, success means to put a smile on the face of his Father and our Father. It's not how much you have in a bank. It's not what, not what job you have. It's not they made, no, no, not, not according to men's standard. His standard for success is when the Father is happy. So these are his righteous qualities that makes him who he is. And we make us who he is, who we, that will make us like him if we meditate on this, his righteous qualities and do the same. With Christ on the throne, reigning as king and high priest, believe me, everything is okay. Father God knows that. <laughs> because of his righteous qualities, his care, the, he, even with his life, running his errands, 
his, uh, his knowledge of Father God's decision and his plan and his priorities, everything Father God has now knows. He, has, he knows all. He studies. He pays attention to everything Father God wants. And it's his pleasure to get it done until a smile graces the face of the everlasting Father. That for Christ is success. Therefore, with, with him on the throne, everything is okay. Holy Spirit, the power of God, testifies that it is therefore fitting for Christ to be appointed king and priest forever. And that's really who he is, the priest of God, the high priest forever and ever. As we read in, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, he said, there was a loud voice saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. He's worthy. Why? Because of this righteous character that he has, which if we also pay attention to them to do, to do what he does, we also will be accounted worthy in the, in the next dispensation to, uh, to any position or as it pleases the, the Son of God to give. Don't forget, all things, are, all, the Father has placed all judgment under his hands. Whatever it pleases him, he, he gives. So therefore, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it said, For unto us is, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. That is, implementing the everlasting, the great decision of the Father will be on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. You know, that's, that's how Father God has exalted him. We also, we also call him the Everlasting Father by his position by his provisions, by his support, by his protection, everything that he does, by his care. He's behaving just like the everlasting father. Therefore, he, the everlasting father also is also called the everlasting father, just like his father. Prince of peace. Said so of the increase of his, of his government and peace, there will be no end. Why? Because of his righteous qualities. That's why. So, as anchor or, or support of the firstborn, the Holy Spirit only does what the governor wants as Father God proposed for his birth. For example, at the firstborn's word, the Holy Spirit took the man's rib and closed it up with flesh, then brought the woman Eve to the man Adam. As Christ the Lord, as the Lord, the Holy Spirit still does it today. He's still bringing, you know, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Lord is still bringing the wife to the man. It's him. So don't be in a hurry to, to get married. Let him choose your wife or your husband for you. Then you, you, you will have peace of mind. All right? So this is how the heavens and the earth were created. And innumerable sons the Father desires to have have been raised to maturity. How? As the, as the, son, as the firstborn son of God wants. Because the power of God, the Holy Spirit, only does what the firstborn wants. And it, the Holy Spirit is the power of creation. It is he, when he said, let there be light, when the son said, let there be, because he knows what the father wants, he studies, when he said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit brought it to pass because it's the power. When he said, everything he says, I only do what the governor wants. So it was the governor who said, let us make one in our own image. And the Holy Spirit did it, took the rib, closed it up and brought the woman to the man. I only do as the governor says. And so that all these are instructive to those who pay attention to, 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 to learn and to think about what is, what is happening. It's like dough. It just keeps expanding if you just meditate on these things and try to understand the key, the key words that are in, in bold. And that's how everything was done. And that's how we ourselves, the innumerable sons of God, have been nursed to maturity. It is as the governor wants, so the Spirit of God is doing in and through us. So all who practice having the same righteous qualities as Christ will also get appointed to reign in the kingdom of God. So now you know how promotion comes. It does not come from the east or from the west. It comes from God. It comes from the firstborn. It is the firstborn that promotes. And just as the firstborn was promoted to, be, to such a preeminent eternally preeminent position because of his righteous qualities. So also me and you, if we pay attention to these righteous qualities and determine to do the same, we also get appointed to reign with him as co-heirs and as co-rulers with Christ. Now, considering above context, why did Father God appoint Christ as Lord over all? Think about it. Why did Father God appoint Christ as Lord over all? I think the answer to that one is, is glaring. But what lesson do we learn from that? 
What lesson do you learn from why Christ our Lord was appointed Lord over all? Send your answers to the email and to the college WhatsApp portal. See you tomorrow.